Hello. Today I'd like to talk about the technicalities of the rapture, how it happens, what Jesus is doing, what we're doing, um, who will be going, who won't. And so it's probably something you've never heard before. I've been thinking about this for a very long time and uh, just want to give you a perspective on it. It might not be the perspective you want to hear. It might not even be the correct perspective, but it, it at least is something to provoke thought. And that's what I'm looking for is to provoke thought along this line. And that will help, I think, the whole community out. So let's get right into this. Rapture date. How? Details, please. The question is how? How does all this work? And why? What is the mode of travel both Jesus and Satan use? It's lightning. Look at Matthew 24, 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Look at Luke 10, 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan, Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now in either one of these places, Jesus could have used quickly, the word quickly, I saw Satan quickly fall from heaven, or he could have just said, I saw Satan fall from heaven. And as far as his own coming, he could have said, he could have said for at, at the speed of lightning or as quickly as lightning. But he doesn't do that. He specifies lightning as a medium from getting point to point um, in these two verses. So we can see something from that. Now, what I want to do is to a little introduction to the way Matthew 24 flows. We look at Matthew 24, 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even into the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. The coming of the Son of Man. Now this is not the returning of the Son of Man. This is the coming of the Son of Man. So I want to compare that now quickly, the verses between Matthew 24, 27 and Matthew 24, 31, where he gathers the elect and see what transpires between the lightning and the gathering of the elect, because we have to find out what the lightning represents. He just is not throwing scripture in there for no reason. So let's take a look over at um, over at the verses that follow Matthew 24, 7. The lightning has just come. Well, after the lightning comes, he says, For so where, wheresoever the carcass, that, that means dead bodies are, there will the eagles be gathered together. So that's an incident after the lightning. And after the, the carcass does appear and the eagles are gathered, what happens? Verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, now we can all see that, also see that reference in verse 19 where it's talking about the time of the Antichrist. So this is a rehash of that. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give her light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then, so after the tribulation, which is the tribulation period or a time of tribulation, then will the sign of the Son of Man appear in heaven. And then shall the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So two things in verse 30, they'll see the sign of the Son of Man, which I, I don't know what that is, but I, I suspect that just as the um, wise men saw the star preceding Jesus' birth, this could be a star, uh, something in the heavenlies. Okay, and then the second part of that verse, they will then see the Son of Man coming. So that's a much bigger picture, isn't it? Much closer picture. And verse 31, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall together together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now, who are these <clears throat> elect that are being gathered together? The Bible tells us in Zechariah 13, 9, that, that one third of Israel will be saved through the tribulation. And of course, also during this time period, because if the lightning is the rapture in verse 27, then we have the 144,000, which a lot of people like to forget about when they talk about the, the rapture. The 144,000 will be on the earth to, to be the elect, they will die, as it says in Thessalonians, that the dead in Christ shall rise first, then those which are still alive, okay, so we'll have those that died during, as martyrs during the, during the tribulation period, and we hear that their prayers under the altar going to God, saying, you know, take vengeance on those, like they pray, and so we see all that happening, that fits very well right in within, after the rapture and after the carcass, which is 
20, Matthew 24, 7, the nations rising against nation, the beginning of sorrows, in verse 8. Verse eight. So we see that that's how this works. If you can't explain what that lightning is in verse 27, then please don't write me and say, say there is no rapture. If you can tell me what that is and how come it goes into this long period of, of time between verse 28 and 31, and how it does seem to accommodate in verse 31 those who are left on the earth, the martyred saints and those who are still alive of Israel who have fled Judea from Matthew 24, 16, then write me and, and please try to explain it to me. But I appreciate that. But otherwise, you must be able to explain the lightning in verse 27. All right, so let's go back to where we were. Um, so that's how, that's how Satan and Jesus travel, especially in this light, last days period. So let's look at another verse, and I have to go back to me in order to, to realign my verses for the next screen because I went to a screen right there I wasn't planning on going to, so excuse that. So we left off with the lightning, and that's how, that's how, that's how Jesus comes for the rapture in Matthew 24, 27. So now let's look over at um, some more verses along this line. The answer to how we are raptured will take us to the end of this video. Lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. It says in Luke 21, 20, Jesus is speaking. Lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. What, the, what does the Bible say to do when we look for our redemption? Lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Luke 21, 28. Let's add a little more to this verse. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Note the word begin in the verse. When these things begin to come to pass, look up and lift up your heads for your redemption and all night. Now, as we saw in the previous screen, you know, Jesus says, as lightning he will come, so, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. So for a quick coming, not for coming to stay and to set up his millennium, for a quick coming, you know, it, it's going to be when we see these things begin to come to pass. We begin to see the nations, Matthew 24, 7, rise against nation. We begin to see the famines and the pestilences and the earthquakes and the plagues. We just had a big earthquake in Turkey. Pray for them. Pray for them. But anyway, um, so that when it begins to come to pass, we should be lifting up our heads. Okay, now that verse corresponds to Matthew 24, 8, where it says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. When these things start, before they start, before the, just as the lightning comes and they're going to start, then we're going to see these things coming to pass, when they begin to come to pass. Matthew 24, 9 through 26, and Luke 21, 10 to 26, are similar in that they both refer to the events after nation rising against nation until it gets into this uh, spiritual look at what happens in verse 27 with the lightning and the carcasses and the tribulation and the sign of his coming and then the gathering of the elect. Those are both rehashes in those areas of, of what happens during the time of the 144,000 on the earth and the martyrs and, and Israel fleeing to, to safe heaven, havens, which is all seen in Revelation chapter 12 also. See my previous videos. All right, let's go to where we're, where we're going to from there. We're going to look at um, lifting up our head, okay, to be redeemed and being ready as we see these things begin to come to pass. So let's go and look at what's going to happen um, at the redemption and who it's going to happen to and so second and here we are if this about the redemption were not true and it wasn't about the rapture then why would Jesus say just a few verses later at, after that verse for as a snare again he's talking about when you see these things begin to come to pass for as a snare Shall it come on all of them, the whole world? Now that's kind of what makes me think this might not be just a nuclear war or beginning of wars. It might be something that that precedes that. It could be coming from the heavens, for it's going to come on all of them, even even the nations that are instigating trouble and the nations are responding to those instigations. We see that it may come on all the whole world that will on the face of the whole earth. So the rapture then the snare that's going to come on the earth, then nations rising against nations in Matthew 24, 7. Watch ye therefore, now Jesus is saying this, not me, watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy 
to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So like in verse 24, Matthew 24, 31, the gathering of the dead and Christ shall rise first and then those which are alive being lifted up. In this case, it says that all of these, okay, that, 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 want, their, that want to be redeemed and have lifted up their heads and, and want to miss the snare, all of these get to stand before the Son of Man. So standing before the Son of Man is quite differently than being gathered from the elect of the earth by the angels of the earth at a, at a quick coming of lightning. And what does Jesus do at the time of the rapture as he is coming at the, as the lightning? What is Jesus doing preparing for that? Does he tell us about that in the Bible? I think he does. Because he talks about in John 10, the parable of the porter, the door, and the shepherd, which is basically called the par parable of the, of the shepherd in most Bibles. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. So we're looking up. Okay, we're listening for a voice. The porter opens the door and the sheep, his sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Does he call our name? Will we hear our name at the time of the rapture? This happened uh, other times in the Bible, didn't it? People calling, God calling out the names of people to get their attention. And the interesting story about that. I'm sure you know that one. And other sheep, he says, and, and, and Jesus says, I have, which are not of this fold, them also must I bring, they shall hear my voice. So we're talking about, in long term, talking about the Jews and the Gentiles. Other sheep, he's talking to the Jews a lot in the New Testament because that's who he's coming to as the Messiah. But at this time, he's talking, he's trying, specifying that, that, that anyone who is listening, anyone of any, any uh, denomination who is hearing and, and listening, and, and walking in what he's going to tell us about in a minute to walk in, then they will be hearing his voice, and he will be called, and he will lead them out. Notice the end of John 10, 3, that he will lead them out. He's going to call a sheep by name. Okay, and now we know in Matthew, uh, the parable of the ten virgins, right here it says, And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out and meet him. Matthew 25, 6. So we hear that there's a cry made. Now maybe before that, we hear his voice. We've got our heads lifted up. You know, we're tuned in, we're listening, we're focused. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out and meet him. So there's a cry made in addition to hearing our voice. So what do we do? Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. It says that in Proverbs 8, 34, which is, God's chapter on obtaining wisdom, which every Christian should read that chapter and understand how much wisdom God has in putting all this together. It's not simple, and it's not something that you can just, not something that you can just, you know, read the Bible cursorily and think you've got it. You have to really seek it with faith and seek it praying for understanding, and, and then you'll get that information that is going to help to understand. So look at that Proverbs 8.34 verse and, and think about that. He hears him and he watches daily. So maybe we need to be watching daily as we get into this time frame that we're talking about. So let's look at another screen. There we go. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. So while we have the light and while we see the light and while we're, while we're focused on the light for our redemption, you know, it, stay in that light. You know, walk in that light lest the darkness come upon us. He says in, he says in John uh, twelve thirty six, which is all part of this phrase, while you have the light, believe in the light that you may be the children of light. It's almost like he's telling us, go to the light. When you see the light, I talked before about how Jesus would come. And it says he comes as lightning from the east to the west. He says that same thing in, in Luke 21. But, but how does that lightning come? Does he come for us and touch us like with lightning and we go up? It's like at the day of Pentecost when, when flames of fire set on the head, head of the disciples. Did they see that coming? I don't think so. Okay, and so we will be inclined, we'll be in tune. The lightning might be just like striking us. Or it might just be that we see the lightning and we grab the lightning, hold on to it. It might be two shafts of lightning, one for each hand. You know, it might be that we just 
were taken. And we're going to get to that in just a second because it's going to be so quickly we won't even notice. And that's what's really great. Okay, let's look at this in, in context of what we had just read previously. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. And he spoke a parable, then behold, the fig tree and all the trees. And then he starts getting into that. And he talks about about um, knowing the timing. Verse 30, when they shoot forth, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, likewise, when you see these things come to pass, when you see the nations begin to rise in nations, the famines, the pestilences, the plagues, and, and the earthquakes in diverse places, know ye that the kingdom of God is at hand. If we miss the redemption, the Matthew 24, 27 Luke 17, 24, lightning, I'm sorry, I said before it was 20, Luke 21, but it's Luke 17. Then you will have to wait for the kingdom of God to come in Matthew 24, 31. You have to go through the stuff that's in the other verses in Matthew 24 from verse, verse 9 to verse 26. And that is not pleasant stuff. It says in there um, that, that he will overcome the saints. That's Revelation chapter 13, verse 7, I think, that that the first beast is allowed to overcome the saints. It says in Matthew 24, uh, verse 9, that, that many will be killed for his name. And, and, and that basically has to do with the 144,000 and the martyrs at that time because the church, again, is raptured up before the beginning of all these things. So let's go look at another screen. Um, and then we'll uh, talk about that. I hate switching like this in the screens, but I have to do it. <clears throat> so, will we hear our names being called? Will we see lightning like beams around us and run to them? Go to the light while you see the light and become the children of the light, Jesus said in John 12. Will the lightning be like a beam we can grab or will it grab us? Revelation 4, 1 and 2, part of verse 2. After this I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit. I think that's how the rapture is going to happen. It's going to be so quick that we might just see a flash of, just a flash. I, that happened the other morning. The lightning flashed one time, and I, I, it, it woke me up. This was about 6.30. My, my grandchildren saw it, because I talked to them later day, in that day about it. But, but then, then there was the thunder. I thought that was just so strange because I was thinking about this subject and immediately I was in the spirit. So when this happens, I think it's going to happen so quickly, we won't know. See how quickly this can happen. And all the effort is from God. God is doing all of this. Jesus is doing all this. He's bringing his churches, his bride to himself, as you see from the parable of the ten virgins in Matthew chapter 25. Luke 12, 36. And ye yourselves liken the men that wait for the Lord when he will return from the wedding that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Luke twelve thirty six. compare that to Matthew 25, about the wedding. And, and so when he comes and knocks, or you see the lightning, you know, that they'll open unto him immediately, just like immediately up here in um, Revelation 4, 2, and immediately I was in the Spirit. And the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. They that were ready went in him to the marriage immediately. So we see that from Matthew 25, 10, the parable of 10 virgins. So I think we're getting in some information that, that when you put it together like this, I think it's making sense, or I hope it's making sense. And um, we've only got a couple more screens to go through, I think, and then we're done. So let's go back there. John 14, 2 through 4. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. So if Jesus comes again, he does not stay, but he's coming to take us away. And that would be Matthew 24, 27 again, the lightning, and Luke 17. And receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So he's made many mansions in John 14, 2 to 4. He's made many mansions. He's coming, and he's prepared those mansions for us. He's coming to take us away. He's not staying and he's going to take us and receive him unto, unto him that where he is right now, that's where we're going to be with him also. Not that he's coming to us to stay on the earth. Again, this is a very rapture-oriented verse, I think. And whether I go, he says, whether I go, ye know, and the way, ye know also. 
because he's telling us through faith, you know, we know that he has made mansions for us. We know where he's going and the way we know because he has told us he's coming as lightning and it's going to happen immediately if we've what inclined our heads and look and are looking for our redemption. So if we're doing that, if we're focused on that, then that's how quickly it happens. That's is where, this is where he takes us. He is prepared to do that. He's prepared to coming. The porter opens the door. He calls our names. We go out. The lightning comes. We go out. And where do we go to? We go to where he is. That's where he is. Jesus has told us through the parable of the porter in the door, the function of the lightning, the calling of names, and the preparation of mansions, where he is, and how to get there. Should we know the way? And do you know that you know the way. Have things like eating practices or rituals or customs or ceremonies or feasts or observances, all those things on a regular schedule. Tithing made you sure that enough has been done. You see, the five virgins that missed the wedding feast felt for some reason that they had to light their lamps. They were looking at the lamps instead of looking at Jesus. Are you sure that you've done enough to, to be ready for this? Well, you haven't because you don't have to do enough. This is a free gift. This is a gift of faith. This is a gift of belief and looking. They needed those lamps to be lit because it was midnight. They were going out. They needed to see where they're going. They thought they did anyway. They really didn't need the lamps, but they had lit their lamps because they needed to see or they thought they needed to see the light. Okay, they were, and the others were, were not even knowing what they were looking at. They didn't think they'd done enough. They weren't looking at Jesus. They weren't looking to Jesus being the light of the world. They were looking instead to what they had done. And so I say, rest in your faith, trust in your faith, and be looking for Jesus because that's really all he requires. I know this is uh, that's a rather, it's a rather deep thing to understand that, but at, at the same time, I think that, that it's, it's very clear to see he's not looking for any work that we can do to add to to going to be taken in a rapture. When he comes, it's going to be quick, and we need to know that it's going to be quick, and we need to we need to be ready for our redemption and seeing our redemption. So let's look at another verse. Would they have felt that way if they if they were there by faith only? No, because faith is all that is needed. Everything proceeds from that. But if they were there with rituals, counting them as works, then there is no faith. But if they were there with faith with works, if they were there with faith with works, they would feel the need to go out and to do more work to have their lamps lit. So if you're counting on those things to get you to heaven, the rituals, the church, belonging to an organization, um, tithing, anything, that's not what this is all about. This is about looking to Jesus. He is the light of the world. He is the lamp of the virgins that had their lamps lit. Faith, trust in him. And we'll get to the verse that everybody knows in just a few minutes. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the, on, the, on the earth. They that were ready went in with him to the marriage. For as the lightning cometh out of the east to the west, and immediately I was in the spirit, and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. If you just read the highlighted text, it reads, Begin to come to pass, look up all them that were ready as the lightning immediately and, re, and that where I am, there you may be, may be also. When you read it like that, it, it's very simple. It's a simple order. Okay, we know the things, the signs of the earth coming on. He will prompt us to be ready. He will come as the lightning. We should be watching. And, and as he said many times, Jesus, and he will receive us unto him that where he is, we'll be with him and able to stand, it says, in his presence. At that time, we'll not be raised from the dead. We'll be standing in his presence. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that is the famous John 3.16 verse that Jesus said. And that whole area is so good about Nicodemus in John uh, chapter 3 and being born again. Being born again is having the faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God that he completed he completed the, the works that were needed under the law to make us covered under his sacrifice. He completed the works of the law to let us be covered under his sacrifice. So just as all of Israel is covered under one sacrifice, we are covered who have faith in him and believe on him are covered 
under his sacrifice. So let's see, I may have one more screen here. I'm not sure. Well, I do have one screen. I'll just go to it really quickly. Those verses that I just read up above, um, these, this is the reference for those verses in the same order that I spoke them. And what I have to do now is to just ask you if you believe in your heart and you want to pray a prayer and make sure that you are ready to go uh, when Jesus comes as lightning. Dear Father God, I come in the name of Jesus, the Son of God, and I want to say to you that I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he paid for my sins, and he completes me under the law, and that I am your child, and I am his His brother in, in, in you, Lord God, and that we are joint heirs in your kingdom. And I just thank you for that. I believe I'm going to change my ways. I'm going to try to follow your word as best I can. I'm going to live a life of prayer and, and righteousness as best I can, and all that is going to be done as your Holy Spirit leads me in my heart as now I have prayed this prayer that makes me born again. Jesus says that when we pray and believe in him, we are new creatures with a spiritual soul and a spiritual outlook that enables us to come to God through his sacrifice and through his presence. I thank you for that, Lord God. Thank you for letting me be your child. I hope to see you soon in heaven. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So if you prayed that prayer, John chapter 3 says that you are born again, and that's all you need to do if you were to come right now. You would be in heaven with him. But, you know, the thing it is, is, is when, we, when we offend the Holy Spirit, we pray and ask God to forgive us, ask the Holy Spirit to forgive us, and we, God says that, that there is therefore now no condemnation. There's no condemnation for what we've done for those that are in Christ Jesus. We're not condemned. God overlooks that even if you die in your sin. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5.19 says, God has reconciled the world through Christ Jesus that our sins might not be imputed, might not be counted against us. So God has done that through Jesus Christ. He's done all the work. So really, it's not it's not easy believism because once the Holy Spirit touches your life, you realize the places where you need to change, and sometimes that change takes years. It really does, but you can overcome everything. Uh, the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to pull down strongholds, cast down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ Jesus. So we can do that. I can. I did it. I'm doing it. You can do it. You're doing it. And I thank God for you. All right, hope to see you up there if I don't see you down here.